The peaceful outcome has released an internal storage solution for the Nintendo Wii that allows you to use 2230 NVMe SSDs inside of the Nintendo Wii to give you a nice clean storage solution for the system and makes it so you no longer have to worry about hard drives dangling loose off the system. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get it set up and installed. Thankfully, as far as mods go, this one is actually really simple and straightforward. And the only thing we really have to do is disassemble the top cover of the Wii to access this spot on the system. But before we dive into that, let's go ahead and get our kit assembled. So when you order the internal NVMe kit from Peaceful Outcome, you're going to get a 3D printed bracket, a NVMe to USB-C board, and then a custom USB 2.0 cord that is USB-C to USB-A to hook up to the USB port on the Nintendo Wii. You will need to supply a 2230 SSD. So in today's video, we're using this Silicon Power one here for demo purposes. This one's one terabyte, so sizes up to two terabytes are supported. But to begin, let's go ahead and get our kit assembled here. So we're just going to take this out of the bag. And there's three little screws, so don't lose those. And we're going to attach this to our 3D printed board here. As you can see, just lines up with the screws. So just get all three of these screwed down with the included mini screwdriver here. And when finished, it'll look just like this. So now we're just gonna remove the NVMe storage holder here. So it's just the screw on the bottom, just hold it and get it undone. Okay. Now we'll attach our NVMe drive to the adapter board here. And then this little piece right here just hooks in underneath the NVMe. And then just make sure that the thicker side is the one on the bottom, so that way we have the threading we need to screw it down. So just apply light pressure to the entire NVMe drive and screw port here, then get it screwed back down. So you'll just wanna make sure to hold this with your finger so it doesn't spin as you try to screw it in. And there we go. So the entire board is now assembled and ready to be put in the Wii. But before we do that, I recommend getting this entire thing set up for use before installing it because the USB 2.0 cord is very slow. Whereas if you use a USB 3.0 cable, you can get things transferred to this very quickly right off the bat. And then after the system is installed, you could use the included 2.0 cable if you need to ever add anything later. But again, it is USB 2.0, so it's gonna be a lot slower to transfer things to this drive. So go ahead and get a USB 3.0, C to C, C to A, doesn't matter, and get it hooked up to a computing device. This can be Windows, Mac, Linux. We just need to get this drive formatted to FAT32. So for today's example, I'm going to be using Windows, and to get a drive larger than 32 gigabytes formatted into FAT32, I'm going to be using the FAT32 format GUI program here from RidgeCorp Consultants, link will be in the description below. But you just click on this image of it right here, and it will get it downloaded. With the program downloaded, just get it opened up. And now we need to make sure that we have the right drive selected, because we do not want to accidentally delete one of our computer's hard drives. So going into your PC, figure out which drive letter goes to the NVMe drive. So this one's labeled NVMe to Wii right now, just for simplicity's sake of knowing which one I need. But as you can see, this one's formatted to NTFS. We want this on FAT32, so that way we can load GameCube, Wii, Homebrew off of it, just everything. But now that we've confirmed that that is the drive we want, Got it selected from the drop down menu here. We want to do a default allocation size of 32,768. Now, if for whatever reason you try to run Nintendo and it won't work with this format selection, you could try bumping this up to 65,536. You could leave the volume label whatever you like and then just select quick format to make sure this doesn't take forever and then just click on start. And done. 
Now, if you had an existing Nintendo Wii hard drive set up before doing this, you could just go ahead and straight across copy everything from it to your new internal NVMe drive, as long as they were both in FAT32. If it was an NTFS, you probably have to split larger ISOs, but I think most people these days are using FAT32 hard drives for their, their Nintendo Wii. But anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy across this drive onto the new one. So here's the contents of my old Wii hard drive. So I have GameCube games for Nintendo. I have my WBFS folder for Wii games. And then I also have a nice little subfolder here for PC applications, such as the FAT32 formatter, GameCube backup manager, and kit to fix anything that might be wrong with my GameCube games, as well as the Wii backup manager. So again, just gonna copy all of this straight over to the new NVMe storage. So we're just gonna go ahead and wait for it to do its thing. And there we go, I have the contents of my previous Wii drive now copied over to the internal NVMe mod. But just a quick recap, if this is going to be your first drive that you're attaching to the Wii, you're gonna wanna use programs like the GameCube Backup Manager and Wii Backup Manager to easily transfer your games correctly onto your drive. So I'll have links to both these programs in the description below. But just a quick demo here. So very easy to get this all set up. Just click on drive one and select your NVMe drive. If you have games already on it, I'll show them here. But to transfer a game over to it, just click on files, click on the add button, files, navigate to where you have your game stored. And then you can easily select a game to transfer over to the Wii. Just select it, tell it to transfer to drive one. And since I already have it on there, it's not actually gonna transfer it right now, but that is essentially the process. And then for the GameCube Backup Manager, it's essentially the same thing. Just launch the program, click on Files Destination, select your Wii hard drive. It'll find the games that are already on there if you have some on there. But to copy a game over, click on File Source, click on the little folder over here, navigate to where you have games stored. It will find all the games within that folder. Then just select the ones you want to transfer. And then you can install them as one-to-one -one or scrubbed. I'd recommend one-to-one -one personally. GameCube games aren't that large and with a bigger storage device, some extra space being used is not gonna be a big deal. And then when the transfer bar goes away, you know that the game has been installed. So just click on reload devices here. And when that scan's complete, you'll now see, hey, there's our new GameCube game added to that list. Awesome. So again, just a quick overview of how to get games put onto this drive if it is the first time you're adding them to a Wii. So again, links to those programs will be in the description below. Makes life nice and easy. But with the drive ready to go, let's go ahead and get it installed in the Nintendo Wii. So to disassemble the Nintendo Wii, we're going to need a tri-wing screwdriver and a Phillips number two screwdriver to get everything to get the outer case removed. So first step, just pop the covers off of your GameCube controller ports, memory card ports, if you have a back compat Wii. And we're just gonna begin on this side. We're gonna take out these three tiny screws on the GameCube port cover. And make sure to store all of your screws nice and organized so you can put them back in easier later. You know where they go. And with those screws removed, you can pop the port covers off nice and easily. And that will reveal another set of screws underneath that we need to take out. Now flipping the Wii over onto its back here, there's going to be two more tri-wing screws right here and right here. On a standard Wii shell, these will be covered with a little white sticker. You can get a little hobby knife and pop those out to expose these two screws. And then underneath the two rubber feet at the back of the Wii system are another set of tri-wing screws that you will need to get removed. Now flipping the Wii onto its last side here, underneath this foot pad is another screw we need to remove. And then more white coverings will be over these few screws here. So just go through and remove these. So again, Phillips number two and tri-wing. 
And after you get this little black screw removed, we can remove the face plate from the Wii itself. Just be careful as you do so, because there is a ribbon cable here that needs to be detached for safest operation. Anyway, back to the rest of our disassembly here. So next we have the battery cover here for the BIOS battery. Just unscrew that and slide the battery out. And that reveals one of our last screws here. And with all the screws removed, we can now pop the top off of the Wii shell here. And that gives us access to where we need to install the NVMe drive. So now we just need to remove two screws from the Wii here, this back one by the power port. And then this black one right here next to this card. And it looks like I accidentally severed this wire, so I'm gonna have to fix this up as well, but it doesn't really have any bearing on the installation process. But we're gonna need to remove this card anyway. Just pull the plastic back a little bit so you can just slide it right out. And again, I accidentally severed the wire, so do be careful about that. I'm gonna have to solder this back in. But now we could go ahead and position our NVMe drive here. So again, it'll look something like this. Now we can just get the screws put back into place to keep it down. And it'll look just like that when installation is complete. So now I'm gonna go ahead and resolder this wire that's not part of the tutorial. I just need to fix it before we close up the Wii. All right, so there we go, wires all fixed back up. So now just go ahead and get this card reinserted just like so. Now we can go ahead and route our USB cable to get it to go to the outside of the Wii here. So you're gonna plug in the USB-C side with the cord facing upward like so. And we're just gonna route it kind of around this heat shielding. So that way we can plug it into the bottom USB port when it's sitting flat like this. So something sort of like that. And you wanna give yourself some slack here on the bottom. So that way you have some available to unplug it and plug it into a USB port. And then just try to make this look as pretty as possible. If you have a USB extender, that would be preferable for hooking it up to a computer later, but I realize not everyone's gonna have one. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it feeds underneath this USB port more than anything, especially if you have an HDMI mod. So that way when you start closing up the shell, it doesn't interfere with your HDMI mod. And will instead feed nicely underneath this USB port right here. So, Something like that, just like that. So as you can see, we get no extra pressure on our HDMI port with the mod, and we're able to plug and unplug this very easily. Again, it's not the most slack, so a USB extender cable is definitely the best option, but it is enough to take this out and kind of plug it in to a USB port. And again, Nicer, clean, aesthetic run of the cable is preferable, especially if you're using a clear case like this. But now we can begin reassembling the Nintendo Wii. So, again, if you don't remember, tri-wings go on the bottom half of the case, and the Phillips go on the top. And after you get this one in place, you can put the BIOS battery back in and get that screwed down. Now we'll take the time to refit the front shell here, so be careful with the USB port here in the back so we don't bump that. So just gonna reattach the cable here. And if you have an SD card inserted in the slot, it might be easier to put this back on with that removed. 
So then just slide it into place like so. And we can begin putting the screws back in. So the tiny Phillips black screw goes on the top here. Now we'll move on to the bottom to put those two black tri-wings back in place. And now for the top. So again, the tri-wing wings are gonna go on the bottom here. And now to get the controller port cover back in place, you can see that it's kind of got these little ledges here that need to slide in like so. So we're just gonna kind of feed that lip underneath the front panel there, and then just push it down into place until everything is nice and flush. Just like so. So now we're gonna take our three tiny black screws and the longest of those goes right here next to the front panel. Then we can put our port covers back in place. And the last two screws that I completely forgot about real quick. So just go ahead and get your two tri-wings put back in on the feet here. And then finally you can put all of your pads back into place. And the system is ready to go. And once you got everything closed up, you can now begin to enjoy the system. So it's worth noting that this NVMe mod is compatible with both WeFlow Lite and USB Loader GX, but between the two, WeFlow Lite is the more stable program. So as you can see here, USB Loader GX just not behaving as well as we'd like. So to fix this, usually you just unplug the NVMe drive, load up USB Loader GX. Press A to enable SD card mode. And once USB Loader GX is loaded up, go ahead and plug back in your NVMe drive. Go over to the settings wheel, go into hard drive settings. Now, if you give it a minute to turn on, you can turn off the SD card mode and you'll see that your hard drive is now being detected. But if you back out from here, it'll reinitialize everything and break everything. So just turn SD card mode back on. And when you go back out, you'll see that it's detecting all of your games here. Whereas if we use WeFlow Lite, Typically just load it up. And it will automatically see everything just flawlessly and right out of the gate, no hot plugging required. And then we can switch over to GameCube games. So it just works a lot better, but then you just play games like you normally would on a Wii. And with that, your NVMe internal storage mod for the Nintendo Wii is now complete. This is seriously a pretty cool mod and it really does help make the Wii a more streamlined homebrew system while providing the advantages of a hard drive over having a larger SD card. But thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have found it informative. And if you found it at all interesting, be sure to check out the Peaceful Outcomes site to pick one up for yourself. But here at the end, the usual favors, if you haven't already, thumbs up, thumbs down, depending how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. And then if you'd like to further help support the channel to keep this content flowing, be sure to check out that join button here or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thank you so much to all of our current backers. You are incredible. Couldn't do it without you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.